Many times when God is about to do something, especially in church and, and to the people of God, Satan tries to bring a picture to show people that things of God probably are not working so that people lose hope, lose the faith, so that people lose their confidence in God. But I want you to understand this. Put more of your confidence in God. He will work for you. God is not slow. He has not delayed. He has not failed on you. But I want you to understand this, that whenever the enemy comes in as a flood, to disorganize, to show like a though church is in a mess, that is when God raises up a standard of his spirit in his people and in his church. We're going to see at the end of the service, because to most people forget, God gave us a prophetic word. It was on 31st. God spoke in thousands and thousands of people that were here of what is going to happen in 2023 and especially what is going to happen to church in the first quarter of the year. Today, I was praying, I was in the presence of God and the Lord comes to me and says, what did I say? What did I say? And um, I had to call people who are in the media, our media department, and this is what I told them. That get the prophecy that God spoke over the church. So that we also begin to run it all over media for people to know that there is a God who speaks. Because a lot is happening today through media that Satan is trying to paint a picture unto the church. But yet it was spoken on 31st in this place. What is going to be spoken and what is going to come out at the end of it all, what is going to happen? We have it on record. So it is high time for the church also to know that we've got a God who speaks and who's ahead of Satan after the mess that Satan is trying to put up what is next. God promised, God spoke. And we're going to hear, we're going to see it was in this place on 31st. How many came on 31st? Okay, do you still remember? Do you still remember? Oh, yeah, just raising up your hand. This is amazing about God. People, let me tell you something. We have a living God who speaks, who never lies. And now we're going to wait for the end because already what you spoke is happening. Now, what is going to be the end of everything? The end of everything. Church is going to be raised up. Church is going to be blessed. And the people of God are going to be much more better in Jesus' name. God, this year, wants our lives, your life, my life, to be better than any other year we've lived. So how do we enter that life that God wants us to live? Because this is what I believe. You've not just been in church. You've been in church for a while. But how do you get better in God? Especially like in moments like this when the world is demanding for its rights in things that even people can't understand. So you, a child of God, what about you? What about you? I want you to know this, that... As a child of God, you have the right to live better, to be better in life, and to be better in this world. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verses 12, what does scripture say? In John chapter 1 verses 12, the Bible says that as many as received him, to them who received God, King James Version says that, when you receive God, you're given power. But what is this power for? Because the Bible says to them that received God, they were given power to become sons. 
How come when you're a son of God, you must operate in power? And other translations say, like New King James Version, that you are given the right. How come you are a son at the same time you must have a right? Now, child of God, understand this. You must exercise your right as a child of God in this world. You must exercise the power of God that is inside of you as a son. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, because as he is, so are we meant to be in this world. The question comes, today how is Jesus? Today how is God? Is God weak? Is Jesus weak? There are those seasons when Jesus came on the earth. He came as a human. He had put all the godliness aside. Then he came in appearance of a man. When he came in the appearance of a man, they could do anything unto him. He lived a life of poverty so that we may not become poor. We were in God. He lived a life of sorrow, as Isaiah says. But then he reached the time and he died and rose again. So when he rose again, as we speak right now, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And all his enemies are under his foot. Now, if he's seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for us, who is he? He's the King of Kings today as we speak. He's the Lord of Lords. You can no longer treat Jesus as you treat him before because he's above all things. When he rose up again as he was going to heaven in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18, he stands and says, All authority and power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Now, Jesus at the moment as he is, the Bible is saying that as he is, so are we meant to be. Now, if you don't exercise your right as a son of God, as a child of God, you're going to realize that what Satan is going to do is to remove your identity as a child of God, is to remove your rights. And then he's going to begin to give you things or do things against your life. And it's going to turn you into what you're not supposed to be. And that is what he's trying to do unto the church. To make us what we are not. He's trying to fight against the power that we have in God. He's trying to fight against the authority, the rights that we have. So child of God, know who you are. And when you've known who you are, know whom you belong to. And when you've known who you belong to, begin to live that life in Jesus' mother name. Begin to live a life. Of a God on earth. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in the book of Revelation. May you turn with me to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter 5. What does scripture say? In Revelation chapter 5. And let's pick it up from verses 9. What does verses 9 say? And they sang a new song. Somebody shout and say, I'm going to sing a new song. You can speak better than that. Now, that means that before a new song is sung, there is a song that is sung before a new song. That means there is what they call an old song. What is this old song? Lamentation chapter 3 verses 14. The Bible says in the book of Lamentation chapter 3 verses 14. See what the Bible says. In Lamentation chapter 3 verses 14 what does scripture say uh-huh we read 14 not 40 please lamentation chapter 3 verses 14 what does scripture say uh-huh i have no let's read from lt version it will bring it out very well let us read my own people uh-huh and they do what now, there is that old song. When your own people can laugh at you. When your own people can sing songs that mock you. What does NIV version say? NIV version says in Lamentations 3.14, I became... Uh-huh, and they... Uh-huh, and... Now... They are those old songs that were sung over your life before you got saved. They are those old songs that 
We are sung over your life before you have yet known who you are in God. Songs of mockery, songs that we are sung because of conditions and situations and challenges that you went through in life. Songs that we are sung because of what the devil had turned your life to be. Child of God, hear me very well this afternoon. Satan can hide your godly identity. And he can put on you an identity that is not godly. And listen to me before we go back to Revelation. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 10, NLT version, watch this. Then we shall see what this new song is about. NLT version says, we all read once. Now, can you imagine? The Bible is saying that once you had no identity as a people, so now who takes people's identities away? How come people can live with no identity? That is Satan. Satan can do anything to your life when you don't have God in you. When you have not yet discovered the rights that you have as a child of God. When you don't know that you have power as a child of God. He can come in and take your identity away. So when he has taken your identity away, that is when we see the songs that Lamentation is talking about. People mocking you. People talking against you. Wrong things happening around your life. Because now the identity is not there. And the Bible says, watch this. Now you are God's people. So when you become a child of God, when you belong to God, your identity comes back. And when your identity is back, you begin to move according to the mercies of God. You receive mercies from God. That means that what they failed you to do before, what they hindered you to do before, you begin to do it. If it is your blessing that was blocked, it begins to manifest again. If there are things they refuse you to have in life, you begin to have them. But without this godly identity, what is going to happen? Lamentation is saying, what is going to happen to you is this. That it is going to reach a time even your own people are going to laugh at you. Your own people are going to begin to sing songs that mock you. Now look at NIV version. NIV version says, watch this. Uh-huh. I became of all. Now, these are people who know you. These are people who are with you. It can reach a time when your identity is taken off. They begin to mock you in all songs all day. You are this, you do this. You are a failure, you are this, you are that. But now, because you are a child of God, Peter says, verses 9, First Peter chapter 2, verses 9, New King James Version, see what the Bible says. The Bible says in New King James Version, but now, somebody shout and say, but now. Now, that means this is when your identity is back. That means this is when now you are in the hands of God. Child of God, you are in the hands of God. And because you are in the hands of God, you become a, royal, a chosen generation. And when you become a chosen generation, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. So on top of you being a chosen generation, a royal, a royal priesthood, you become a holy nation. And because you are holy, this makes you to become a special people. Say in God, I become special. Speak it louder. Speak it with faith. So in God, when you become special, you become a, spe a special possession for God. God possesses you. Most times when it, become, it comes to possession, People know about evil spirits possessing them. But listen to me very well. When you become a chosen generation, when you become a royal priesthood, when you become a holy nation, when you become a special possession for God, a special people unto God, God begins to possess you. And when God possesses you, what is next? When he possesses you, you must give praises and to him, you become a praise and not a mourner. You, you are taken out of challenges. You are taken out of situations. You are taken out of a lot of things 
that made you cry, that made you lack, that made you to be a laughing stock. You become special. You are possessed by God. And what does it mean to be possessed by God? Proverbs. For you to understand the new song that you must read, you must sing. Proverbs chapter 8. What does the Bible say? In Proverbs chapter 8 verses 22. What does scripture say? Uh-huh. Ah, let us all read. What does the Bible say? The Lord. No, you can do better than that. Let us all read. The Lord. Uh huh. Let's read it again. Uh huh. The Lord. Now, when the Lord comes and possesses you, what happens? It's because the Bible is saying the Lord possessed me at the beginning of His way. The time you get saved, that is when God comes and possesses you. So from the beginning of the way of salvation, you must be possessed by God. Not by sorrow, not by anything. God comes in and possesses you on the beginning of the journey of salvation. Why? Because it is Him who takes you out from the powers of darkness. It is Him who delivers you out from the hands of the enemy. Remember that before Satan possesses people, before you are saved, it is Satan who is in control of your life. Now when God comes in and possesses you, He takes you out from the hands of the enemy. So when you're taken out of the hands of the enemy, Colossians says chapter 1, verse 13. Let us all read King James Version. Then we come back to Proverbs. And we see what this new song is about. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, who has delivered us? Somebody shout and say, when I'm a child of God, I am delivered. You're delivered from what? You are delivered from what? Ah, you are delivered from what? The Bible is saying, who has delivered us from the powers of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? So as we are seeing that when you become a special possession unto the Lord, as Peter is saying, watch this, when you have become a special possession, because now he has delivered you out from the powers of darkness. You must reach a level of becoming a praiser. You must begin to proclaim the praises of he who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now what is about the marvelous light of God? Singing a new song. Not the old song. And child of God, listen to me. God today has sent me to tell you. They are old songs that must end. If God is the one who possesses you. If God is the one who saved you. Those old songs that people sing. Mocking. Those old songs that people sing. Because of challenges and situations that you've gone through. Tonight I am here to declare. There is a new song that is going to be sung over you. There is a new song you're also going to sing in Jesus' name. You will sing that song and they'll also sing it over your life in Jesus' mighty name. Now watch this. So now we are delivered. And as we are delivered, we are taken into the kingdom of his dear son, which is his marvelous light. And then what happens? Salvation. The day you got saved, the, in the book of Proverbs, the Bible has said that the Lord comes. And when he comes, he possesses you at the beginning of his way. Now, child of God, this is not about anymore about demons. It's not about anymore about the devil. Now, it is about God and you. Did he save you? Did he save you? Are you saved? Are you a child of God? Now, you have the right. The right to receive from your God. Uh, you're not getting it. You have the right as a child of God to receive what God has for your life. You have the right as a child of God to receive what belongs to you as a self person in Jesus' mighty name. Now watch this. When he comes and he possesses us from the beginning of his way as we, go, we get saved. And the Bible says before his, before his works of the old. Now, what are the works of the old of God over our lives? 
Now, today, understand this. The works of the old of God over your life are his blessing. He blessed you long time ago. In God, we don't look for blessing because we are already blessed. But, but yet, but yet, what happens is this. Satan comes in and I've been saying this. He blocks blessings. He hinders blessings. So now when we get saved and we begin to walk on the path of salvation, what God does is this, is to go back to those old ways when he blessed you and he begins to command a blessing to stand. And I'm here tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to command every blessing of yours to stand again and to manifest again in Jesus' mighty name. And by the time you leave the presence of God, whatever has ever hindered your blessing, whatever has ever held your blessing, to make people sing old songs over you, those songs must end and a new song must be sung in Jesus' mighty name. Say, oh God in heaven. Ah, you are so weak. Say, oh God in heaven. Speak it with power. Say, oh God in heaven. And every old song that everyone knows. And let the new song begin to be sung over my life in Jesus' name. So now, when we become a possession of God, he possesses us. To very many of you know people who are possessed by evil spirits. But watch and see. After now, you're going to be possessed with God's blessing, with God's power, with God's Holy Spirit. Now, if an evil spirit can possess somebody and somebody becomes worse, how does someone look like when you are possessed by the Holy Spirit? How do you look like when you are possessed by God? How do you look like when you are possessed by riches? How do you look like when you are possessed, oh my God, by the power of God? You look better. You become better. You begin to sing a new song. So when the Lord comes and possesses you through possession, he calls before even these old works of his. So he calls the blessing that he commanded over your life to stand. And now watch and see. This is what you're about to become. Verses 18 of Proverbs where we are. For you to understand what we are dealing with. What does verses 18 say? Riches. Ah, let us all read riches. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now watch this. God is not possessing you for your life to become a mess. He's possessing your life so that riches are manifested in your life. So that you become an honorable. Ah, now, most of you know about honorables of probably of our nation who go to parliament. But you are an honorable for God. He wants to make you better than before. But when he has come to possess you, his riches to begin to manifest through your life and to make you an honorable. Do you know what that means? It, to become honorable in God is to separate your old life from your new life. Your new life must be much more better than who you were before. If people saw you four years ago, five years ago, Ten years ago, three years ago, whosoever saw you before, when you become honored by God, you become much more better. That is how old songs end in Jesus' mighty name. There is no way God is going to end an old song over your life without turning you to be honored. You must become honored. He who saw you as a loser, he will show you as a nobody. He will show you as someone who can't make it. Now when you are honored, the new song changes everything. You must become better than before. And that is why you're here. You're here for life. God wants to give you a better life that is going to take you to nations. God wants to give you a better life that is going to make you rich. God wants to give you a better life that can enable you to receive good things in life. 
Why do they sing mocking songs? Why do people begin to laugh at you, even those that know you? Because they think they know you very well. But listen to me very well. There is a God who knows you even more than your mama. There is a God who knows you even more than your father. There is a God who knows you even more than your friends. And he's going to surprise those who think that know you. Now turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, if you thought that you know me, there is a God who knows me better. And I declare that in Jesus' name. Whosoever has been standing on that old song, I know that man. I know that ministry. I know that church. Watch and see. You are the redeemed of the Lord. You are a child of God. And when you are a redeemed, what happens? The psalmist says in Psalms 102 verse 7, let us read what does the Bible say in Psalms 107, Psalms 107 verses 2. What does the Bible say? Let's, <laughs> that means now you are about to sing a new song. Are you ready? The Bible says let's, <laughs> let the redeemed, not those who are still in the hands of the enemy. Uh -uh. The redeemed, those who know they are right in God. Those who are the children of God, who have been given the power to become children of God. They are the redeemed ones. God, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say. Now what can you say? Can you sing again the old song? I don't know what happened to my life. Can you begin to sing the old song again? My mother, my stepmama, my boss who fired me, our stepmom who bewitched us. That is the old song. Your song must change to a new song. If you're still singing the song of COVID, you know when COVID came in, we never stayed the same. Oh, okay, if COVID came in and we never stayed the same, be on a higher level than how you were before. When the enemy comes in as a flood, what does the Bible say? The Bible says God raises the standard of his spirit against the flood that has come in. If COVID came in with deaths, if COVID came in with fear, if COVID came to kill, you is a child of God. God is going to step upon what brought COVID to elevate you in Jesus' matter name. So you are the redeemed of the Lord. What can you say? What can you say? In other words, God is expecting a new song from you. Not the old song. Those songs of failing. Those songs of sickness and disease. I have a disease. I have a sickness. Even you've reached a time of calling it my sickness. My disease. It is not yours. Change the song. Change the language. Speak like a child of God. Speak like one who has authority. Speak like one who has power so the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say say what so now that means there is a new level where god is taking you this year there is a new level of glory whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy now when we come back to revelation you must understand this first of all the bible is saying in revelation where we are Chapter 5, verses 9. And they sang a new song. Who are these who are singing a new song? The redeemed of the Lord. Child of God. May God end your old songs in Jesus' name. Now, if you believe it, stand and lift up those hands and speak it seven times. And say, Lord Jesus, there is an old song. There are many old songs in my life. That must end. Hallelujah. Okay. We go back to Lamentation. Then we connect to Revelation. What does it say? Uh, we read again. All of us as we stand. My. Now stop there. If you know of anybody. Who knows you very well. Either your husband. Or your wife. Or your sister. Or your brother. Or your relative. That has been speaking ever bad against you. Tonight, may God raise a standard in your life. That our own people, what do they do? They laugh. They laugh 
At who? And on top of laughing, they do what? Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Oh, you, Yasidana. Repeatedly. Oh, you, Zavako. Repeatedly. Oh, you, Yayono, Nekaya Sidwala. I am here to nullify such songs in your eyes in Jesus' name. Omuntu omusiru tafana na angakwe. Omuntu ya yono nekatafana na angakwe. Gamba, I am the redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Omuntu wa ya kwe zafa kotafana na angakwe. Aba uwa ya bali butabika. Enyimba sabo zino koma. Obaba de muami wonga kule medeko. Enyimba se zigenda koma. Obaba uchala oya bata kule medeko. Enyimba sabo ziteke do koma. We baba angaba sawo wade bakule medeko buli mande buli mwezi we gugwako emyezi we chita ngo inokenda ojuze chitabo mutwaliro echo chiri nokoma muri nyeria Yesu Kampulira amina Kampulira amina Wabanga ye banka ye bade chikola na buli mwezi inokusasula loan yeyo ololuimba lugenda koma katonda genda kugabirira Osasuleroni, hanetoke na kuta mukwe wola muni nyeri ayesu. Gamba ayesu. Eze nyimbezo. Zikomye. What does NIV version say? We read it together. NIV version. We read, aha. Aha. Now lift up those hands. Say Lord Jesus. Whosoever has laughed at me. Whosoever has spoken, whatever they've spoken, end it right now. Now, are you ready for the new song? Now, watch this. Lamentation asks a question. Chapter 3. <laughs> this is interesting. Verses 37. Who is he? Now, turn to that neighbor and ask that neighbor. Well, songs have been spoken, but who has been singing? Hmm. You know there is saying you, you, you know You can have a saying by saying People, people, people But who is that person? Who is he? It's a question Who is he who speaks? And it comes even to pass You joke with Satan He has used many people in your life To speak things that come to pass That are not godly but yet the Bible says they speak evil and evil comes to pass when God has never commanded it. Now, if you don't know who you are, you may think what they are talking is right. Yet Satan is a liar. To the God is going to nullify lies against the truth that is spoke over your life. And I stand to declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, whosoever has ever spoken anything and it came to pass, yet God has never commanded it, may that be ended by a new song that God is going to give you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Say, Lord Jesus, give me that new song. Speak it again. Say, Lord Jesus, give me a new song that will stop every old song in my life. Speak it again, say Lord Jesus. Everyone speak it and say Lord Jesus. Give me a new song that will stop every old song in my life. Now sit down as I'm about to close. Now what is the new song? Revelation where we are. 
Revelation chapter 5 verses 9. See what the Bible says. Let us all read. Uh-huh. No, no. Are you ready for your new song? All right, let us all read. And, uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Now watch this. The Bible says that now these redeemed, these people whom God possesses, they reached a time and they sang a new song, which is very different from the old songs that were sung before. And the song was, you are worthy. In other words, now they became praisers. They are no longer mourning over what has been spoken over their lives. They are no longer mourning what they've gone through. Now they've become someone different. And the Bible says, and they sang a new song. And as they sang a new song, because they were praisers, they said that you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. And now watch this. And they said that all oh, Lamb of God, who is Jesus Christ, you are slain. Now listen to me very well as I'm closing. Jesus is taken to the cross for you to be better. He's taken to the cross for your life to be better than the old life you are in. He's taken to the cross for you to live a new life in him, which is better than the life you had before. God is not crazy to bring you out of the world, to take away those four boyfriends or men you used to play around with and to bring you in church and squeeze you and become a nobody. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? If you are a man probably who had four women or boyfriend or, or girlfriends or lover and he serves you, don't think he has brought you in church to punish you. If probably you are doing a certain business in the world and used to be corrupt, stealing people and now you are in church, don't think he has brought you in church to beg. You are here to become better. You are here to live better. You are here to be a testimony and to the world that there is a better life in God. Ah, you've not got it. If before you are not married in church, you must be married. If before you are not doing better in church, you must do better. Church is not prison. Church makes us better. Church is not bondage. Church makes us to live a life of liberty. You don't got it. It is the devil that is trying to use the world to paint a picture that when you come to church, you become crazy, you lose everything, you must become a nobody. Yet, according to God, you were in church, he was slain. You were in salvation to become better in life, for your life to be much more better a million times than what you are in the world. Because in salvation, you are free. In salvation, you are possessed by God. Ah, ah, turn to that neighbor and tell that neighbor, you imagine. You remember when demons were on you? You remember when you were in the world, how you were before? If demons could allow you to work, for sure. Eh? If demons would allow you to make your hair every week. Now God wants your hair to be cut off because you can't afford a hairdo. Look at your life. How was it before you got saved? You know, before I got saved, I would drive myself. Before I got saved, I would do this and that and that. Uh -huh, now in God, in God you are supposed to be on foot. In God you are supposed to beg. In God you are supposed to be sick. That is a lie of the devil. Know your rights, child of God. You, oh my God, as many as received him, what did he do? He gave them the power to become sons. He gave them the right to become sons. God wants you to enjoy better in church. He wants you to live better. He wants better things to come your way when you're in him. So now, because you know what your identity is meant to be in God, stand still in God and begin to believe God to become what you're meant to become in him. He was slain. That is what the Bible says. You were slain. And you have redeemed us to God by your blood. The blood of Jesus cleansed you to live better, not to live worse in church. And watch this. That he has brought you out 
of every tribe now if you know of any bondage on a tribe level where you come from you know if it is a, a bondage on the level of a tribe you must be above it because you have been saved out of every tribe. No one can stand on traditions to hold your life again. No one can stand in tradition to disorganize your life again. You are above the level of tribe. You are above the level of tongue. Now which kind of tongue has been speaking and singing over your life? When you are the redeemed of the Lord, you are above. You are above every person. You are above everything. Why? Verses 10. Verses 10 says, When he redeems you and takes you on a level of being his child, he makes you to become a king. You are a king. You are a queen of God. <laughs> what do kings do? Kings have authority. Kings have dominion. So when you become a child of God, you have authority over every good thing. You have the rule. You can rule over everything. I, I am talking to people who don't understand a new song. This is the new song they are talking about. You become a king over things. Whatever you want, you must have it. Whatever you desire, you must have it in life. You are a king for God's sake. You have the rule over money. You have the rule over land. You have the rule over everything. And on top of that, you become a priest. What do priests do? They serve God. You must serve God, not situations. You must serve God, not people. So he puts you on a level of serving him. And the Bible says, then you live a reigning life on earth. But how do you reach that level of being a king and a priest, moreover reigning? And what the devil has done, he has let people serve God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has let people serve God. He has let people have titles. I am a child of God. But the authority that is in a child of God, the power, the right, he fights it against your life. You just call yourself a monopoly. But when you stand and say, I'm a monopoly, the world says, you, you, the first question they'll ask where is your God? But watch this. Because old songs must end for new songs to be sung. He is slain for you to receive what? a king that is dominion and role to become a priest to serve God and then through that you begin to reign on us so how do we reign in other words how do we live a victorious life in God as I'm closing do you want to be victorious that is what they call reigning on us because whatever is born of God as first John chapter 5 verses 4 says, overcomes the what? Now, how do you become an overcomer? By reigning on us. How do you overcome? This is how you overcome. Verses 12. And we close. Because this is your new song. Verses 12. We all read. Uh-huh. It must be a loud voice. Use a loud voice as you read. Uh-huh. Yes. Now, you see your song. Now, your song, you must sing it loud. The other time, old songs were spoken over your life or sung over your life. And they were not loud. Now, let your new song be loud. Kuruno wo yimba, sibe ba yimba, ba yimbe nyimbe nkade, teka sobola, kasi dana, ba karogera mbuloko lako. Can you imagine? Ntine ba karogera mbuloko li. Haba loko le ba karoga. Teka from church. Kes karoge. But now, it is your turn to sing in your song. Moreover, your new song must be loud. Tell your neighbor, your new song must be loud. These old songs, sometimes they can't be loud. Can you shout when you're asking for transport money? 
Can you shout when you're asking for a lift from a brethren? To Allah, for you humble yourself. But when it comes to a new song, it is you testifying. Everyone must hear of the goodness of the Lord. Everyone must see of the goodness of the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready? Nangisari dentasa. Echo tebanya yeka anakwecho. Mpola mpola. Tasa. Tue na kuwa yom nange mpa yechi weba. Echo tebanya yeka anidamu. But a new song. It is your testimony. A new song. The goodness of God is what, is what they are seeing around you. It must be loud. I stand to declare in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost. May your new song be heard everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Somebody stand and say my new song. Ah. Declare it loud and say my new song. It's going to be heard everywhere. Uh -huh, saying, we are uh -huh, with a loud voice saying, that is not a loud voice. Saying with a loud voice, uh -huh. yes, uh, to receive. Somebody shout and say power. Again. Again. Can I ask you a question? Jesus is God in flesh. You think he never had the power? Now how come he has received the power? When Jesus went at the cross, the cross was a place of exchange. Whatever Satan had taken from man, whatever Satan had said man will never have, the cross was a place of exchange, was a place of sacrifice. He stood and said, I am the second Adam. I need back whatever Adam lost. I need back whatever you took from the first Adam. I am the second Adam and everyone who comes through me because I am life, I am the way, I am the life because I am the truth. Whatever you took, I want it back. So he brought back the power. And when he received the power, so that you can receive the power. The power is for what? Acts says, chapter 1, verses 8, that when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall become a witness. A witness of what? Of what God can do. Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 18. What does the Bible say? What does it say? It says that you shall remember the Lord thy God, who gives you power to create wealth. You're going to be wealthy through the power of God. And you're going to be a witness of the goodness of God through the power. Somebody shout and say power. Again. That is part of your soul. You're going to have the power of God upon you. <laughs> People are going to witness the goodness of God through your life. And now he was slain. Not only for you to receive power, but also for you to receive riches. Somebody shout and say, riches. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verses 9, that Christ, you should know what the grace of God is about. Grace is not about you just being saved. Ephesians 2, it says, by grace you are saved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Which is a gift. So you must know this, that the grace of God did not only bring you the gift of salvation, but through the grace you should know that Christ became poor, that you may become rich. So that means now when he went at the cross he suffered all that man can go through in poverty so that you never be poor again for you to be rich so on your new song you have the power your new song is about the riches and also what is in that song wisdom you need the wisdom of God in wisdom and knowledge, we are established in salvation. Isaiah says, 33 verses 6, watch this, that in your times of salvation, your stability in salvation is what? Is through wisdom and knowledge. So if you want to be stable in salvation, you must have the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God because that is the stability of your times in salvation. 
So in your song, there is power. In your song, there is wisdom, which brings your stability. In what? In salvation. And now, the strength. Why the strength? Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. So God wants to give you the strength to do all things. And you're going to find yourself doing all things. Because the strength is going to be there. And now what is another part of your song? As we see. Anna. Somebody shout and say, I'm going to be honorable. First Chronicles says what? Chapter 4 verses 9. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. When Jabez understood that he's not supposed to be pain, he called unto the Lord in verses 10. And he said, Lord, that you may bless me and enlarge my territories. Let me stop being painful unto other people. And the Bible says, and God granted his request. So he became honorable. That means when you become honored by God, you will never see pain again. Oh my God. When you become honored by God, you're going to be above situations and challenges that have ever put you down in Jesus' name. So now God, in your song, as we are seeing, the Bible is saying, you're going to be honored by God. And your song also has glory. Somebody shout and say glory. Again, somebody shall and say glory. glory. Now what is about glory? Isaiah is a prophet. He's down. And the Bible says in Isaiah 60, verses 1 amplified version, the Lord comes unto Isaiah and says, Arise and shine, for the glory of God has come. So when the glory of God comes upon you, it is to raise you up from the old songs, from the portrayal, from circumstances that had kept you in the old life, they tell Isaiah that, hey, Isaiah, arise. Arise from your depression. Arise from your portrayal. Come out from circumstances that have kept you and rise to a new life. That is what the glory of God is about. We are taken from what put us down. We are taken from what has kept us. When the glory comes, it pushes our lives to a new life. So in your soul, the glory is there. And above all, blessings. Why blessings? Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of God makes us rich and adds no sorrow. Now these seven things are the foundations of life when we are in God. When you are the redeemed, when you are the son of God, you must have the power of God, the riches, the wisdom, the strength, the honor, the glory, and the blessings. Chokira kuno mugambi. Ogenda kwe mbolu imbolu pia. Enna kwe genda. Omanyi ninayo gai wange. Toyo gaya nalinyari. Ninayo. Oi nayo chi. Toyo gaya nalinyari. Ninayo gai wange. Ajero kunde tere mere kumbi. Osoka kwe wola. Non sasula. Ate na areta. Nama muno oloruimba luko morukade. Eye na kweke nda muli nyeda yesu. Kampu nila amina. Oino kuja kuchachi na ya kuleta. Okera yo. Ateno osoko musanyo sanyo. Eva nange. Ngonyo mie wa dayamba debimuli. Vanange. Ngoli wamanyi. Na yuka kare kaya jangu mwoto kwa tukende kuchachi. Eye na kwekoma. Akwe iyo lero. Katonda kwe moto kayo lero. Kampulina amina. Kusomero wakwana kwa nabudi muntu. Wakwana kufa kuwa getu kubanga ya ingizo mwana o. No kwana yera kubanga ya kuburie chike na maso. Baba asa. Uli muntu mkwana kwa natagasa. Mpaka kwe di teacher. 
kubanga olwa okusasula abana bo bafune oluwendo lwingira mu somero nga te baba tawanyiza wabwana kwa nabu di muntu omufumbi awo mwana we mmere kwanga taina mero card simama zita mero card omufumbi mkwano go nyonyo omukubira na akasimu chiri chiti eyo omufumbi ne yewana munange no musadde mkwano kwange kumbe simukwano go go panga omwana ino kulya kamere ku somero abata gasa bona bali musimu yo no obera ne chizibe cha million oina abantu nga mutwalo ku simu yo teri to bayiza na kuweza mitwala asatu wokubira no munange nange ndi bwo kubira e chiri bubinyo wokubira munange mbozi ka nkuwe yo mutwalo kukakadde kukolechi kati wali wo luyimba roino kufuna gama ai yesu mpolu imbo lupia rero luima lwa amai that is the new song a song of power a song of riches a song of wisdom a song of strength a song of honor a song of glory a song of blessing masima ngo imbo luimbo ro hizo luima mpola mpola Olaba abantu abatu kakulimba ankole David unji na imba na kalulu no teka mu na yeka chingo iliko mukisa na yeka chingo likama go likama gezi ateka ti when you have the wisdom you have the knowledge you have the glory of God you will shout a loud song which will be heard everywhere in Jesus mighty name and the good thing about this song you sing it and even others sing it over you and may this happen to your life in Jesus' mighty name. Now lift up those hands and say, Lord Jesus. Oribasheta katambrodo sayakaka. Say, Lord Jesus. Give me this new song. I'm leaving your presence with this new song. I want to sing this song. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Church, listen to me. We're going to get better than before. We're going to get better than before. Now, if Satan is trying to disorganize church through social media, and I believe a lot of you have heard a lot, right? But watch this. First, sit down. Esther, give us this clip. Give it to us. Everyone, eyes on the screen. Sound off. Let's hear that sound. The church. Louder, it's please. Be give us sound. Wait. Spiritually. No, no, no. First, to pause it. You guys. You guys on the sound. Give us sound. Let's all hear this. This is on 31st of December. Night, the night overnight we had as we were coming to 2023. Let's hear this. Uh huh. The church is gonna be fought. The church is gonna be fought spiritually this year. And I repeat it again the church is gonna be fought spiritually by those people who call themselves the church. But yet, according to God, they are not the church they just have places but there's what they call the church of god it's gonna be fought and you're gonna hear churches that are being fought by those who call themselves churches but they're not churches but they are places but what god is gonna do he will raise a standard of his church and his church shall prevail for there are many people who are not men of God, though they, are, they have been calling or they've been called the men of God. According to God, they are people. They're just people, but they're being called men of God. So they're going to be fighting men of God. The people are going to be fighting men of God. But because 
the church must prevail the men of god are gonna stand strong and a distinction shall be seen and god will make them much more greater and stronger so the church will prevail but the places though they are called churches will not because what god is gonna do is to put a distinction is to put a distinction is to put a distinction every man of god was listening to me when i say man of god even if though you are a woman or a man you are inclusive listen to me very well and listen to my voice very well you are a man of god you are a woman of god you have people you minister with you work with stay in oneness with those people you are with and as you stay in oneness that and continue to serve god that is how you are gonna overcome this spiritual attack it is a spiritual attack that is gonna come don't think that it is this attack it is a spiritual attack that is gonna come but as you stay in oneness The unity that will come will make you to prevail and the spiritual attack will be overcome in Jesus name. 2023 God is going to show a public distinction between church and places that have been called a church. Public distinction. He's going to show a public distinction between the so-called men of God men of God they, those who call themselves men of God and those who are people and those who are called by him who are his men of God a distinction will be there this year of 2023 is going to be a year of restoration of joy and to many people a restoration of peace and too many lives that will result in two people having a life that will show the love of God. We're going to enter a quarter, the first quarter of the year, these three months. Very, very many people who looked miserable, who looked at no, as nobodies before the people, but yet they trust in God and believe in God. What God is going to do is to change their life first quarter tamuchuli de ate gol tamuchuli de in the what the truly in first quarter olabe bitambula inda ko olabe walu aba bade baita basajja ba katonda tenga tebali ngabantu buntu ne walu baita abasajja ba katonda be balumbye you watch and see bacho gera four months before katwe chibatu chetulimu kat wait and see the end result And if you're with us also in the service and you've, you've heard and they've shown you that clip, it is time for us to believe more in our God and see where God is taking us. Now everyone rise in the name of Jesus. Say Lord Jesus. <laughs> Say Lord Jesus. I am ready to become who I am in you. Say Lord Jesus. <laughs> I am ready. To become. What I am in you. Every old song. Let it cease right now. Those songs of mockery, those songs as they sing them laughing at me, let they end right now. Oh God in heaven, give me my new song of glory, 
of honor, of blessings, of strength, of power, of riches, of wisdom. Let this song begin to be sung by me and by many. In Jesus' name. Let's clap our hands to Jesus. And child of God, I want to encourage every one of you, if you can go back to our overnight prayer and listen to the prophecy that God gave. Prophecy is for edification, to build you up and to prepare you where God is taking you. And I stand to say it is well. Because at the end of it all, God promised us peace and joy. And that is what is about to happen to your life. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Lift up those hands. Say, bless me, O oh God. Empower me, O oh God. Touch them, Lord. Give them a new song. Touch them, Lord Jesus. Give them a new song. Speak it, please. With faith, speak loud. Come into my life. Right now. And give me a new song. Look at your hands. Play me that song in the in the presence in the presence of Jehovah. You know it, God Almighty. Look in your hands, please. Troubles vanish. That's amended. in your hands. I bless you, people of God. I bless you, people of God. Jesus. I bless you. I bless you, people of God. You are a pastor, please come here. You are a pastor, come here. Jesus. Step over here, please. Look in your hands. Men of God, may God bless you.
fill you with his power for great things to begin to happen in your life. Look at me, everyone. Shout. Say, Lord Jesus, give me a new song. Speak it again. what you're saying. Speak it, Mama. Speak it. He will. He will. Yes. He will. Oh, my God. Pick her up. He will. Jesus. He will. Tell him. Pick up this man of God. Mama, come here. Everyone speak it and say, Lord Jesus. Bring the mama here, guys. Tell him, say, Lord Jesus. Give me a new song. Oh, my God. Speak it loud. Touch. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Jesus, speak it. Everyone, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Say, Lord Jesus. Give me a new song. Speak it. Uh-huh. Chikaka said, Joe, you get up. My God, He's gonna nullify every old song. Jesus, tell him, tell him, tell him, you are in His presence. Tell him, speak it loud, Jesus. Yes, speak it. Oh my God, declare it. When we Mezichuka, declare it. Uh huh. Spigot. Bring that mama in black. Spigot, spigot, spigot. Something is changing. Something is changing. Something is happening to you. Oh my God. Yes. We get a mass of watch together. They are changing your song. Declare it. Come here, young lady. Come, come. Hold her hand, hold her hand, hold her hand, hold her hand. Even hold that one, a hand. And come, oh my God. Something good is happening. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There is a new song. Oh, 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 oh. There is a new song, oh my God. Declare it, say, Lord Jesus. Every old song will cease to be, oh my God. Every old song. Cease to be. Get a mass of Gama Ayesu. Oh my God. Umpolu Imboru Pia. Ogena Quimboru Imborum Ksa. Ogena Quimboru Imba. Oh my God. Cho get it. 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 There is a new song that is coming. There is a new song you are receiving. Come here, young man. Ribose Keta Brada Baba Bayaka. Look at me, young man. How old are you? Change one. When was the last time you took alcohol? Jesus. When was the last time you took alcohol? Last Sunday. You took alcohol. Last Sunday, but one. And one, what happened when you took it? Jesus. You are fired from your job. Remo Shatada Bobos. And Get off his life. He's receiving a new song in Jesus' mighty name. What you thought he would become, he will never become it in Jesus' name. Say, Lord Jesus, give me a new song, oh my God. Say it, say it, say it, say it. Oh my God. But you get it, you get it, you get it. You are receiving a new song. You get it, you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. There is a new song you are receiving. Uh huh. Speak it. Uh huh. Now, listen to this. Old songs are ending. Young one or seven. Old songs must end. Say, Lord Jesus, I am tired of the old songs. Say, Lord Jesus. Every 
old so. In my life, must cease to be. Sit down. You may not understand. Oh my God. You may not know what is happening right now. Young one. But the Lord is faithful. Who is turning things around? Mama, touch yourself like that. Jesus. And breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in. Thank you, Lord. And breathe out. Touch her. Touch yourself. She will never curse. She will bless. Everyone love. Gena maso seke. Gena maso seke. Leka mukama Leka mukama kujeka masika ago. Everyone love, 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 love. Jesus. Now lift up those hands. Everyone laugh. Go on. Laugh. Untimbula mubo to wal jakuvera won seko. Untimbula mubo bone bone. Untimbula mubo dake. God is not gonna happen in the name of Jesus. Somebody laugh. Put her down. <laughs> Somebody laugh. Go ahead. Oh Jesus. Mama in red, come here. Seka, seka, seka. Somebody laugh. May God give you laughter. <laughs> May God turn around your life in Jesus' mighty name. May God cause you to mount up on high in the name of Jesus. May you receive a song. <laughs> a song of blessing in Jesus' name. Somebody laugh.
no, 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 is what I say, no, is what I say, no, in the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Oh Jesus. Somebody laugh in the name of Jesus. Somebody laugh in the name of Jesus. We to manyiche we japo enakwe kuvira obusi bubugenda Oh my God. No, no, no sorrow anymore. No, no suffering anymore. In the name of Jesus. Young lady, come here. Sebo, hold the hand of that of your wife and come quickly. Hey, young lady, come. Somebody laugh. Now listen to this. Many times you may not understand the magnitude of where God is taking your life. Follow me. Just follow me. Touch the lies, oh Lord. People listen to this. You may not understand the multitude where God is taking your life, but God loves you. Have we got some water here? Oh my God. Look at me, young lady. It is well. It is well. As well. Give them to drink that water you brought in the house, that water that has disorganized them, that water that you use against their destinies in Jesus' mighty name. I nullify whatever you put in that water. I refuse it to stand against their blessing. I refuse it to stand against their success. I refuse it in the name of Jesus Christ. Today I nullify whatever you put water and you came to disorganize this family. I speak the blessing of God over them. They will be free in Jesus' mighty name. They will see the goodness of God in the land of the living in Jesus' name. Somebody laugh. Oh my God. Somebody laugh. Somebody laugh. Somebody laugh. May God bless you. May God prosper you. May God turn around your life in Jesus' mighty name. May you arise to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Oh, somebody love. Say I'm blessed. Speak it again. Speak it again. Speak it again. Yes, you are. You are blessed. The Lord is with you. Thank you. 
in front of your husband. Separation, the past you. Look at your husband. Look at him. Stand in front of him. Oh my God. How much money? In front of your wife, but in the presence of God. Ribo shata de mamaos. Arikata prodo shita la maho santa prede de bataipa. Stand up and lift up those hands. 
Say power. Come upon my life. Say riches. Come upon my life. Say wisdom. Come upon my life. Say strength. Come upon my life. from Bokedia for a service here, Friday service. May God bless you. They have come all the way from Bokedia. Wow. Jesus. Bless this couple. Change their lives. again. Let's give God the praise. When, when they said Bukedia, in my mind, I, it was like Bukedia. Bukedia is where? How far is Bukedia from here? Eh? After Mbali, you go to Bukedia. You're also from Bukedia? Come here. This one is the daughter. She was the one who was falling the other time. Have you fallen again? No. Come. Pick them up. People, let's praise the Lord. So, uh, your daughter will, used to fall, right? Last Friday we were here and the Spirit of the Lord revealed it. And it was just of her life. She's not fallen again. No. No. She has never fallen again. She has never fallen again no. since Friday. Yes. Do you fall? Because she told me that you also fall and the mama. Yes. You all fall in the house. Yes, we fall in the house. Now, under the power of God or what? You just find yourself falling. Yes, you find myself falling. Guys, first sit. This is amazing. Mama, she's your daughter. She was here on Friday and the power of God touched her and the father says she's never fallen again. No, she has never fallen again. But you guys fall. Me, I don't fall. It's the father who falls. And the rest? Yes, even my mother-in-law used to fall. Even your mother-in-law. So it is from their home. I don't know. But they fall. But you'll never see them fall. Since you are the head of the family, that is just out of your house. And listen to this. What Satan had intended for evil, making the blessing of your house known to manifest, that is gone. That will never be again. In your life, in your children, I chase it out of your house. I chase it out of your blood lineage in Jesus' mighty name. That will never fall again, my God. This is a blessed family. This is a blessed house, oh God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Jesus. People, let's clap our hands to Jesus and give him praise. Father, this is gone out of this house. 
we give God the praise. Let's glorify his name. You, mama in green, come here. Run quickly. You in green, come run. We don't have the time. Jesus. I bless you. Look at me. I bless you. In the name of Jesus. May you never struggle in life again. Whatever was intended for evil, I turn it around for God. Oh God. Whatever was intended for tears, I declare joy. Joy unto thee. Say Lord Jesus. Bless my life. Helen, come here. Today's the 30th. 30th. 31st. Wow. I want you to write this. God is going to stand. your business. This is not a season for children of God to lose work, income. It's a season for children of God to be added upon. You're going to go back at your place of work, but there must be an increment of salary. Come here. Clap your hands and thank God for what he has given you. Oh my God. And it's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. Sebo, come here. It's going to be quick. It's going to be quick. People envied you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to work with you. I want to but they told me to call you and you are not going to be the more you look at him, the skin of where you get in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm leaving your presence with a better life. Woman, come with your husband, hold your hands together and come. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. are very clear and very simple. Emira ni wena abiriti ya from now. Muchi wandike no chi wandike. Bintwebi. Muwechi meche kumi. Fully. Because Malachi 3.10 speaks it about bringing a whole offering in every version. English standard version. They say bring a whole tithe. Eh? Muwe kubina watu wa gamba. Omanyi wenye business person yako expenses manya bichikwanga tunayakuwa business yona as a whole at which quad mchiwe and another thing buli sande msabe make it a point waji in a period of three months from now because we are going April May, June, July 
again up level. More provision is coming. I tell you, remember that the children are a gift. They are not a burden. God will take care of them. So do that. Didn't you Baba Gambe Mukoli? To give what? But holy in its entirety. No Sabaji. Pressure himself, sir. Bangami and Babos. Would you have Can you imagine? Naru do Krava Baroka Bata Sabasan. Name of Musabe. Wait, Chef Major Mako. Obuang was a good yaw. Let's praise the Lord. Nama Ayesu Mpomsa Page T. Wacho Mpama and you go Pama Gazi go Nama Ayesu Mpolim Bolupia in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God the praise. Let's get a hold of our seats. Let's get a hold of our offerings and let's give in the name of Jesus. Father, bless every man, bless every woman as they are giving in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and give in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We glorify your holy name. There is none like you in your presence. Let's go ahead and give here when we are giving. We all rise. Let's all give. Let's all rise. Let's all rise. Let's go ahead and give. If you're watching us on television, Uli atulaba kutipi gena maso Kwate chine abo choo Kwate nsikoso Ogene maso bowa Waduwe ye nambe tamuli ya kurutimbe Oinzo juko ze satuki Wherever you watching us from There is There are numbers that There is a number that is running on the screen You can use that number to give you Your seeds Your offerings in Jesus name Father we give you praise We glorify your holy name Because of who you are Giving me all stand if you're seated, stand please. In the presence, in the presence of the Lord, of the Lord. You may be in this place and you're not yet saved and you want to give your life to Christ Jesus, that your chest. If you're watching me on television and I'm not yet saved, I want you to touch that chest and repeat these words and say, Lord Jesus, here I am in your presence. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood and cleanse me with your blood. With my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that you are Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my life and save me. And wash me with your blood and write my name in the book of life. You Satan, I denounce with your demons. The Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And from today, I'm saved and I will enter heaven in Jesus' name. Father, and to every man and woman that have given their lives to you, may you come into their lives and serve them and be with them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Lift up those hands and say, I have a new song. Speak it loud. For sure you have a new song. You have a new song. Yes, wherever you're watching us from, we want to welcome you on the 30th. We have a great service in this place, 30th of April. We're going to be thanking God. And our spiritual father, our pastor, Pastor Robert Kayanja, is going to be in this place to lead us from the beginning to the end. We want to welcome all of you with your families, with your friends. And probably you, 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 you would want to come with people you work with. You can also bring them. It's going to be wonderful in this place. We're going to be thanking God. And don't come empty-handed. Get a special Thanksgiving offering. And let's come and thank God together. And God is going to do great, great, great things. The heavens are open. All the heavens are ready. We are just waiting for the day. And everyone is ready. So we believe that on that day is going to be marvelous. The service will begin at 3. We want to welcome all of you in Jesus' name. May God richly, richly bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday. Have a blessed weekend. If you're in the diaspora, may God bless you. Wherever you're watching us from, may God richly, richly bless you. Till we meet on Sunday, till we meet again, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.
you have fed with God's knowledge, if you have fed with God's understanding, then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you? Whenever the new man is not fed 